Hello, and welcome to the Cash-Based Practice Podcast, a production of drjaredcarter.com, aimed at giving physical therapists and other healthcare practice owners the information needed for success in the private pay business model. And now, here's your host, Jared Carter. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me. This is a highlights episode of the podcast where we've gone through past episodes to extract the stories, the strategies, and the topics that we feel really bear repeating to give you the best chance for success in the out-of-network private pay business model. As always, I want to thank my sponsors of the podcast, Patient Sites, not just for being loyal sponsors all these years, uh, but for what they've done for my own private practice. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Check them out at patientsites.com. If you are interested in this practice model, which obviously you are, there's some must-know information in a free two-hour in-depth training that I've hosted at drjaredcarter.com forward slash the eight keys. You can go to that webpage and pick a time that works for you to take in all that information and apply it to your current or future practice. And of course, if you have appreciated anything about this podcast, gotten anything from it, even just inspiration, please hop over to iTunes and leave an honest review and I would deeply appreciate it. So with all that said, thank you again so, so much always for joining me and Here is this week's episode highlight. You can certainly have a successful cash-based practice that treats a wide variety of conditions, uh, a wide variety of the the, uh, population as a whole, Uh, but some cash practices really do have a lot of success in honing in in specific, really niche down segments of the population, uh, whether it is a type of activity, runners groups, things like that, or a specific injury or condition. Uh, I've been asked a lot about niche practices and niche markets along the way, and sometimes I'll get the question, well, you know, is manual therapy your niche? And in a way, yes, but there are a lot of manual therapists out there. What we're looking at today is more of specific segments of the population that you can target with your marketing and how to do so. Uh, so, you know, first and foremost, kind of stepping back from looking at those markets, no matter what your niche is, if you're going to have success in this model, in this business model, and I, I've said it a thousand times, I'll continue to say it, you have to offer something that is substantially different and better, or at least you can prove or, or have the general public perceive that it is better than your insurance-based popula- uh, excuse me, your insurance-based competition in your area. I mean, otherwise, why, why would anyone forego using their insurance to see you rather than someone where they can just pay a copay if you're really not giving something different? Now, for me and many of the cash practices that I, owe, I, I know, um, that one of the main differences there is a longer one-on-one treatment sessions. Uh, with the same therapist, so not you know not uh, funneling patients over to a physician, or excuse me, a physical therapy assistant or a tech or anything like that, but one-on-one visits with the therapist, the same therapist every time, and really extended one-on-one time care. Uh, so, for instance, in my practice, I spend a full hour with each pra- with each patient, and. Um, you know, so it's not that you have to spend a long period of time, but if you are going to spend shorter periods of time, then your pricing needs to be commensurate with that. You know, I'm, the hour that I'm with a patient, I charge 150 an hour. Uh, if I were going to try to, you know, shorten those visits down and see patients for maybe 15 minutes at a time, just do a few quick manual therapy techniques, of course, I wouldn't be charging $150. So, and people wouldn't be paying that for 15 minutes. So you, you kind of have to, to look at those different components of how you price things when you're trying to set yourself apart um, if you're not gonna do longer visits. Definitely for me, being um, well-trained and certified in manual therapy has been a big bonus. But again, that's not necessarily the case with all cash practices. I know of practices that are heavily and are almost completely exercise-based, and we're talking obviously outpatient ortho practices. I know of pediatric cash practices. Um, I even know that know of some that have a heavy uh, neuro population. So um, whatever it is that you are doing, You need to be really good at it, get great results, and again, offer something substantially different and better than your competition in the area. 
Otherwise, people are just not going to forego using their insurance. And, and on that topic, just to throw in here, most patients that are uh, using cash practices actually do have insurance. They do have health insurance and they make the choice to forego using that insurance because of what I just said, because they found a practice where they feel they're going to get care that is substantially better than they could get if they use their insurance else, uh, elsewhere. So had to take a little step back and make that very, very important point. And now let's look at how you might uh, work into certain niche market populations and what those what those markets might be. So the, the list here, really, it can go on and on. We could talk for hours about different different niche markets. But some of the ones that that I have focused on myself have been uh, youth, first and foremost, youth sports. And what I found here, it's really interesting that there are plenty of uh, plenty of parents that bring their children for, to me for, pra- uh, for treatment who would never pay out of pocket as much as they pay for their kids for their own treatment. You know, they come in, I can just tell that they talk about having a knee pain or a, a neck pain, and I start to ask them about it as I'm working on their child. And I can just tell they're kind of skirting around the issue and, and really avoiding the, the topic of having to come in themselves. They would rather either use their insurance or just not do anything about it at all. And I see that really time and again. But when it comes to their child with that, especially with that, you know, uh, big athletic competition coming up in a few days, they will not only pay 150 an hour, They'll bring them in after hours and pay over two hundred dollars an hour if it means that they that their child is going to be able to compete uh, that much sooner. So what I found in in uh, getting into the youth sports market or niche market is that you know you might think, well, I'll just go to the local high school training rooms and talk to the trainers. And I've, I've actually found a very low return on investment for for my time in, in going that route. I'm not sure what exactly it is, but um, there seems to be some kind of maybe a turf war thing in, in the mind of the trainers that I visited. But even when I go in there with you know very positive attitude and and not in a you know hey let me come fix all your your athletes kind of kind of way, but really trying to offer something of value up front and, and just approaching them in a way that in most cases works with with approaching other professionals. Um, there's just kind of a cold shoulder feeling. So my suggestion would be not to worry about going to the high school athletic training rooms other than in cases where they've reached out to you first and say they want to meet you. So what I would say is to approach the coaches or parents of youth sports athletes directly and offer something of value first. Don't just go in and say, hey, I'm a physical therapist in the area and you need to send me all of your athletes when they get hurt. Go in and say something along the lines of, you know, I'm Jared Carter and and I'm a physical therapist in the area. I do a lot of treatment of uh, athletes in this particular sport. And what I'm realizing is that many of them have injuries that could be avoided if they had had certain information beforehand, if they had known to strengthen certain things or stretch certain things beforehand. So I'd really be happy to come in and do a quick presentation for you and your coaching staff or you and the parents of your of your kids on what exactly these common injuries are and how they can be avoided in the first place. Teach you guys a few things to have your kids do and hopefully you'll ha- you'll have a lot uh, less injuries this season. And they really seem receptive to that. Sometimes you're not going to be, but if you go to enough different coaches and groups, you're going to definitely get to be able to set up some of these presentations. And when injuries do happen, because of course, even with all the injury prevention in the world, injuries are still going to happen. You are going to be the expert that in their mind, you're going to be the expert in treating that exact injury or the injuries that are involved with that sport. So that is a great way to kind of get your foot in the door, not be kind of a, you know, snake oil salesman type or, you know, anything like that, but have them open the door to you rather than pushing you away because they feel like you're just there to solicit business. Now, a couple things to add on to the idea of creating a valuable presentation for your niche market or a group that you want to get in with is anytime you do have a presentation like that, 
please, please, please get out the video camera. Make sure you have decent audio if the video has to be far away from you, maybe with a lapel mic or something like that. But record what you're doing because then you can go back, do a little bit of editing, put these things online, put the presentations up online, and then you can market them digitally to other groups, to other similar groups. So, you know, say you have a really great presentation of one group of personal trainers. Well, now, if you have that recorded, you can create a series of blog posts and YouTube videos about it, and you can actually email out and market those to other groups of personal trainers so that you're not having to do it over and over and over again. And then those that, are, that seem receptive to you having emailed them this free good content, then you can follow up with them and set up, you know, set up a lunch or set up time to go by and meet their, their trainers in person or to meet those coaches in person. So make sure that you get every, you take every bit of effort and get the maximal amount of effect from it. And, you know, doing things like that online is a great way to do that and really apply that idea anywhere that you can with any of your marketing activities. Um, one other thing I did want to add to this idea of niche markets it's not just about getting in front of, say, a runner's group or a golfer's group or whatever, but you can really become. You know, the person for plantar fasciitis or for tennis elbow or for uh, maybe low back pain or a specific type of low back pain or hip labral tears, etc. So really, you know, if you have an area that you know you're, you're highly effective at treating, you're passionate about treating that area or that particular injury, injury or syndrome, then get in front of groups of whether it's doctors or other practitioners who see a lot of those particular types of patients and get and offer them something of value. Make, make them more valuable to their patients and to their clients. So an example of that would be the injury, pre, uh, injury predisposition screening that I taught to groups of personal trainers. I've done that to, with a few groups of personal trainers, and that has literally resulted in thousands of dollars of income for me in referrals uh, because I simply went in and said, hey, I want to make you more valuable for your, for your uh, clientele. And whether that's to a group of personal trainers, a group of coaches, a group of parents, a, a group of other practitioners, chiropractors, physical therapists, uh, medical doctors, etc., you can you can reproduce this model in so many different ways with so many different niche markets. So I really challenge you to to get creative with this. And and obviously these are things you can do whether you have an insurance based practice or a cash based practice. This is applicable no matter what. Um, so think about that now. What areas can you can you dive into and really generate a new segment of business for your current or future practice? Thanks for listening to this episode of the Cash-Based Practice Podcast. If you liked what you heard here today, we have some extremely important things we want to send you. First, a quick start guide to cash-based physical therapy and Medicare. This free ebook will provide the primary rules and regulations surrounding this confusing but important topic. Secondly, we want to share with you the five characteristics common to all successful cash-based practices. Find out the vital things Jared has learned from years of interviewing cash practice owners and running his own successful cash practice. As one of our listeners, we want to give you all this information absolutely free. You can get it right now by going to drjaredcarter.com forward slash success. Again, that's drjaredcarter.com forward slash success. Go there now to get your copies and we'll see you next time.